Let's talk about a man who one day decided to take a walk in the woods. Now, this wasn't just any walk, and these weren't just any woods. This man, let's call him Mike, had been at a crossroads in his life, much like many of us find ourselves. Mike's walk was more than a stroll. It was a quest for clarity. He had been running the same race on the same track, day in and day out, wondering why he wasn't getting anywhere different, anything better. It's funny, isn't it? How sometimes it takes getting lost to truly find our way. So there Mike was, wandering, when suddenly he stumbled upon a clearing he'd never seen before. It was as if this clearing had been waiting for Mike patiently for him to find it when he most needed a new perspective. In that moment, standing at the edge of something new, Mike realized that the path to success, to change, wasn't about finding a new forest. It was about seeing the woods he'd been walking through with fresh eyes. That day, Mike made a decision, a decision to reset his mind for success. Now, why start with Mike's story? Because it's a lot like my own. My journey wasn't in the woods, but it involved a similar moment of realization. There was a time when I was going through the motions, living by the day's demands, reacting to life rather than directing it. I, too, needed to find my clearing in the woods to see my world differently. Resetting your mind for success isn't about changing where you are. It's about changing how you see where you are. It's about saying to yourself, I might have taken this path a hundred times, but what if today I notice what I never saw before? What if today I make a different choice? For me, the change came from a shift in perspective. I started to look at my daily routines, my habits, and my attitudes. I asked myself what habits are serving me and which ones are holding me back. It wasn't an overnight transformation. No, it was a series of small decisions, small resets that gradually reshaped my path. The first step in resetting your mind is to acknowledge that you have the power to change your course. It's to recognize that while you may not control everything that happens to you, you absolutely control how you respond. This realization was my clearing in the woods. It was my moment of understanding that success, growth, and happiness were not just destinations to reach, but journeys to be enjoyed and learned from. So how do you begin to reset your mind for success? Start with gratitude. Every morning, I would wake up and think of three things I was grateful for. It sounds simple, but this act of recognizing the good even on bad days started to change my outlook. Next, I focused on learning. I read books, listened to tapes, sought mentors. I became a student of life, hungry for knowledge, eager to apply what I learned. It's amazing how much wisdom is out there waiting for us to seek it out. And finally, I embrace discipline. Success isn't a product of what you do occasionally, but what you do consistently. Discipline became my foundation. Whether it was dedicating time to write, to plan, to reflect, or to connect with others, it was discipline that transformed my good intentions into tangible results. As we walk through today's conversation, remember Mike in the woods and remember my journey too. We all have our forest to navigate, our paths to choose. The power to reset our minds for success lies within each decision we make. It's in the willingness to see the familiar with new eyes, to challenge ourselves to grow, to learn, and to become the architects of our own destiny. Let's take that first step together. Let's take a moment to consider the landscape of our minds. For many of us, it's like a garden that's been left untended. Weeds of doubt, fear, and procrastination have taken root, choking the life out of the dreams and ambitions we once planted with hope and enthusiasm. It's a common place to find oneself, standing in a garden, overrun with the thorns of past failures and the brambles of insecurity. These mental barriers are the culprits behind halted progress and unfulfilled potential. Now think about this. Every thought, belief, and emotion we experience is a seed that takes root in the garden of our mind. The thoughts we water, the beliefs we nurture, and the emotions we give light to will determine the landscape of our lives. It's a simple truth, yet one so easily forgotten amidst the noise and haste of daily living. Our minds, you see, are fertile ground 
rich with the potential to cultivate an abundance of success and happiness. But just as a gardener must tend to their soil, planting seeds with care and diligence, so must we tend to the gardens of our minds. It begins with uprooting the weeds of negative thinking and planting in their place seeds of positivity, resilience, and determination. Consider for a moment the power of a single positive thought, a single seed planted in fertile soil, given attention and care. It can grow into a towering tree, providing shade and shelter. Similarly, a single positive thought can grow into a mindset that shelters us from the storms of doubt and fear. But here's where many of us stumble. We scatter seeds haphazardly, allowing both positive and negative thoughts to take root without discrimination. We water the garden with our focus, often unknowingly nurturing the very thoughts that work against us. It's time to become intentional gardeners of our minds, choosing with care the seeds we plant, watering them with purpose, and basking in the sunshine of positive action. To do this, we must first clear the ground, removing the weeds of past regrets and the rocks of stubborn, limiting beliefs. It requires effort, yes, and persistence, but the rewards, oh, the rewards are boundless. A mind cleared of debris is a mind ready to grow wonders. So how do we begin this process of mental cultivation? It starts with awareness, becoming mindful of the thoughts we entertain and the beliefs we hold. It continues with choice, the deliberate decision to foster thoughts that align with our deepest values and highest aspirations. And it is sustained by action. The daily practice of nurturing our positive thoughts into As we move forward, let's embrace the role of diligent gardeners tending to the landscapes of our minds with the same care and attention as we would a precious garden. Let's plant seeds of ambition, water them with perseverance, and cultivate a life of success and fulfillment. The mind's landscape is ours to shape. Let's create a garden that reflects the beauty of our highest potential, a testament to the power of intentional thought and action. Together, let's watch as our gardens and our lives flourish beyond our wildest dreams. Let's take a moment to consider the landscape of our minds. For many of us, it's like a garden that's been left untended. Weeds of doubt, fear, and procrastination have taken root, choking the life out of the dreams and ambitions we once planted with hope and enthusiasm. It's a common place to find oneself, standing in a garden overrun with the thorns of past failures and the brambles of insecurity. These mental barriers are the culprits behind halted progress and unfulfilled potential. Now think about this. Every thought, belief, and emotion we experience is a seed that takes root in the garden of our mind. The thoughts we water, the beliefs we nurture, and the emotions we give light to will determine the landscape of our lives. It's a simple truth, yet one so easily forgotten amidst the noise and haste of daily living. Our minds, you see, are fertile ground rich with the potential to cultivate an abundance of success and happiness. But just as a gardener must tend to their soil, planting seeds with care and diligence, so must we tend to the gardens of our mind. It begins with uprooting the weeds of negative thinking and planting. In their place, seeds of positivity, resilience, and determination. Consider for a moment the power of a single positive thought, a single seed. Planted in fertile soil, given attention and care, it can grow into a towering tree, providing shade and shelter. Similarly, a single positive thought can grow into a mindset that shelters us from the storms of doubt and fear. But here's where many of us stumble. We scatter seeds haphazardly, allowing both positive and negative thoughts to take root without discrimination. We water the garden with our focus often unknowingly nurturing the very thoughts that work against us. It's time to become intentional gardeners of our minds, choosing with care the seeds we plant, watering them with purpose, and basking in the sunshine of positive action. To do this, we must first clear the ground, removing the weeds of past regrets and the rocks of stubborn, limiting beliefs. It requires effort, yes, and persistence, but the rewards, oh, the rewards are boundless. A mind cleared of debris is a mind ready to grow wonders. 
So how do we begin this process of mental cultivation? It starts with awareness, becoming mindful of the thoughts we entertain and the beliefs we hold. It continues with choice, the deliberate decision to foster thoughts that align with our deepest values and highest aspirations. And it is sustained by action. The daily practice of nurturing our positive thoughts into tangible GP. In the grand tapestry of life, one principle stands as a cornerstone, the philosophy of change. It's a simple yet profound truth that the only constant in life is change itself. Yet how many of us truly embrace this notion? How many of us build our personal philosophies around the acceptance and more importantly, the celebration of change? Developing a personal philosophy that not only accepts but also embraces growth and change is akin to setting the sails on a ship. Without sails, the ship is merely adrift, subject to the whims of the sea. But with sails set towards change, we harness the winds of life, steering towards our desired destination. It's about recognizing that we are the captains of our ships, the architects of our destinies. Our beliefs and values, the very bedrock of our personal philosophy, shape our reality and future prospects more than we could ever imagine. Think of them as the compass by which we navigate the vast oceans of life. If our compass is fixed solely on resisting change, fearing the unknown, we circle in familiar waters, never daring to explore beyond the horizon. However, if our compass embraces change, sees it as an opportunity for growth, the whole world opens up to us. Consider for a moment the mighty oak tree. It begins as a small acorn, seemingly insignificant. Yet within that acorn lies the potential for great growth. But growth requires change, transformation. The acorn must cease to be an acorn to become the mighty oak. So it is with us. Our greatest potential is realized when we allow ourselves to embrace the changes that life brings, to grow beyond our current conflict. Yet, embracing change is not merely about acknowledging it. It's about actively seeking it out, understanding that every experience, every challenge is an opportunity to learn, to expand, to become more than we were. This doesn't mean recklessly throwing caution to the wind. Rather, it means carefully considering our path, our values, and making deliberate choices that align with our vision for the future. Our beliefs and values are not static. They evolve as we do. The key is to remain conscious of this evolution, to question, to reflect, and to adjust as necessary. It's about building a personal philosophy that is both a foundation and a sail, grounding us while propelling us forward. So how do we cultivate such a philosophy? It begins with self-awareness, with taking the time to understand our core values and beliefs, it involves setting aside moments for reflection, asking ourselves tough questions about who we are and who we want to be. It's about being honest with ourselves, recognizing our strengths and confronting our weaknesses. From this place of understanding, we then take action. We set goals that challenge us, that push us out of our comfort zones. We seek experiences that broaden our horizons, that introduce us to new ideas, new ways of thinking. We build relationships with those who inspire us, who encourage us to grow. In essence, developing a personal philosophy that embraces growth and change is about making a commitment to ourselves. It's a commitment to never stop exploring, to never stop growing, to never stop growing. It's about recognizing that the journey of self-discovery and personal development is ongoing, that there is always another layer to uncover. Another lesson to learn. In the quest for success, there's one ally we, we all possess, but often overlook our attitude. It's the silent partner in every endeavor, the one factor that can transform obstacles into stepping stones and failures into lessons. You see, the power of a success-oriented attitude is not just in navigating the smooth waters, but in how we sail through the storms. Let me share with you a story that perfectly illustrates this point. There was a young man named Tom who embarked on a business venture with enthusiasm and dreams as vast as the ocean. But like all voyages, his was met with storms. His first business failed 
leaving him not just financially bankrupt, but emotionally depleted. Yet, Tom had an unusual response to his situation. Instead of wallowing in despair, he asked himself, what can I learn from this? That question marked the turning point in his life. Tom's story isn't unique because he faced failure. Many of us do. It's remarkable because of his attitude towards that failure. He saw it not as a stop sign, but as a guidepost pointing him in a new direction. For each setback, he adjusted his sails, learned from his mistakes, and set out again. Today, Tom is a successful entrepreneur, not despite his failures, but because of them. His attitude transformed potential disasters into the foundations of his future success. This transformative power of a positive mindset isn't magic. It's about making a conscious choice. It's about deciding to see the opportunity in every challenge, the lesson in every setback. A success-oriented attitude doesn't ignore obstacles or pretend failures don't sting. Instead, it chooses to focus on the possibilities that each obstacle and failure presents. Consider for a moment the story of a seed. Buried in the dark soil, it faces the ultimate obstacle, a barrier of dirt above it and the darkness surrounding it. Yet within that seed lies the potential for growth. With the right amount of water and sunlight, it pushes through the soil, not around it. The obstacle becomes the path to sunlight, to growth, to life. We, too, have that potential within us. Our attitudes can be the water and sunlight we need to push through our obstacles, to grow, and to thrive. Cultivating a success-oriented attitude begins with awareness. It's recognizing when we're viewing our circumstances through a lens of negativity and choosing to shift our perspective. It's about asking ourselves, what's the opportunity here? Or what can I learn from this? Even when the answers aren't immediately clear, it also requires practice. Like any skill, a positive mindset becomes stronger the more we use it. We can practice gratitude, focusing on what we have rather than what we lack. We can practice resilience, standing up one more time than we fall. We can practice optimism, trusting in our ability to navigate through storms and reach our destination. Now let's talk about something practical, something you can do starting today that will begin the process of resetting your mind for success. You see, the mind is a bit like a garden. Yes, I've spoken about this before, but it bears repeating. Just as a garden requires constant care and attention, so does the landscape of your mind if you wish to cultivate success. First up, goal setting. Now, I'm not talking about those vague someday I'll kind of goals. I mean, clear, specific, written down goals. There's power in writing down what you want to achieve. It's like making a contract with yourself. It's easy to dismiss an idea floating around in your head, but once it's down on paper, it becomes real, tangible. Ask yourself, what do I want to achieve this year? In the next five years, Make your goals as clear as possible. I want to improve my health is a good start, but I will exercise for 30 minutes. Every day turns a wish into a plan. Next, let's talk about visualization. This isn't daydreaming. It's a focused, purposeful exercise. Picture yourself achieving your goals. See it, feel it, believe it. If your goal is to give powerful presentations, Visualize yourself standing confidently, speaking clearly, and receiving a round of applause. Your mind often can't tell the difference between vivid visualization and actual experience. By visualizing your success, you're priming your mind to act in ways that make that success a reality. Affirmations are another tool in our mental reset toolkit. These are positive, empowering statements that you repeat to yourself daily. They reinforce your goals and prime your mindset for success. For instance, if your goal is to become more confident in your professional life, you might affirm, I am capable, skilled, and confident. I bring value to my team and my projects. Say it with conviction, believe in the words, and you'll start to embody them. Now, none of this means anything without daily disciplines and consistent action, goals, visualization, affirmations, they're all just the beginning. 
The real magic happens when you take consistent action towards your goals. Daily disciplines might not be glamorous, but they are the foundation upon which success is built. Whether it's dedicating an hour each morning to study, 15 minutes of meditation to clear your mind, or simply making your bed to start the day with a win. These actions, repeated over time, build the momentum that leads to significant change. Let me share a bit of my own story here. When I first started on my journey towards personal and professional development, I was all over the place. I had dreams, sure, but they were scattered. It wasn't until I started applying these practical steps, setting clear goals, visualizing my success, repeating affirmations, and sticking to my daily disciplines that I began to see real change. It didn't happen overnight, but with time, the small steps added up to a big transformation. So what's the takeaway from all this? It's that resetting your mind for success is within your control. It starts with the practical steps you take every day. Set your goals, visualize your success, use affirmations to reinforce your mindset and commit to daily disciplines. These are the tools at your disposal, ready to be used. Start small if you need to, but start today. The path to resetting your mind for success isn't a sprint. It's a marathon, one step at a time. In navigating the waters of life, it's vital to consider the role of influence and association. Think of your mind as a garden. The people we spend time with, the media we consume, are like seeds being planted in the soil of our garden. Now, if you plant weeds, don't be surprised when they take over and choke out the flowers. It's the same with our minds. Surround yourself with negativity, with people who tell you it can't be done, with media that drains your energy and inspiration, and you'll find those weeds taking root in your own mindset, stifling your growth and success. On the flip side, when you choose to surround yourself with positive influences, with people who uplift you and media that fuels your growth, you're planting flowers in that garden of your mind. These flowers will bloom, creating a landscape that's not only pleasing to the eye, but also invigorates your soul. The people around us, the books we read, the shows we watch, they all shape our worldview, our self-image, and our approach to life's challenges. Let's talk about mentors, for instance. A mentor is not just someone who teaches you directly. They can be authors of books you've never put down, speakers and videos you've replayed countless times, or even leaders of the past whose stories have inspired you. They are the gardeners who help you weed out the negative and cultivate the positive, guiding you and planting the seeds of success in your own life. I remember in my own life seeking out the wisdom of those who had walked the path before me. It wasn't just about their successes. It was their failures, their challenges, and how they overcame them that provided me with a roadmap. They didn't have all the answers, but they asked the right questions, prompting me to think, to reflect, and ultimately to grow. Now, you might be wondering, how do I find these positive influences and mentors? Start by looking around you. Who are the people that inspire you, who challenge you to be better, to think bigger, they might be closer than you think. And in today's digital age, the world is at our fingertips. Find those authors, speakers, and thought leaders who resonate with you. Dive into their books, their podcasts, their videos. Let their words and their journeys influence your own. But remember, it's not just about consumption. It's about connection. Seek out communities, both in person and online that align with your values and your goals. These communities can provide support, encouragement, and accountability as you navigate your own journey. In the fabric of life, each of us will face moments of adversity. It's not a question of if, but when. How we respond to these moments, how we harness the power of resilience is what truly defines us. Let me tell you a story that perfectly encapsulates this idea a story about a young woman named Sarah. Sarah's dream was to become an athlete, not just any athlete, but an Olympian. From a young age, she dedicated herself to her sport, training tirelessly, sacrificing the ordinary pleasures of childhood for the extraordinary pursuit of her dream. 
However, life as it often does, threw a curveball her way. Just as she was on the cusp of achieving her dream, an injury sidelined her, not just for the season, but potentially forever. Doctors told her the odds of competing again, let alone at an Olympic level, were slim to none. Now this is where the story could end with a dream deferred, a spirit broken, but Sarah, like all great characters in the stories of resilience, chose a different ending. She refused to let the opinion of others define her reality. She embraced her adversity, not as a barrier, but as a challenge to overcome. Day by day, through pain and frustration, through doubt and despair, she worked to rebuild herself. Not only did Sarah return to her sport, but she also went on to compete in the Olympics, achieving not just the dream of participation, but the honor of standing on the podium. Sarah's story is a testament to the strength of the human spirit and the power of perseverance. It's a vivid illustration of resilience, of what it means to face adversity head on and say, this will not define me. I will overcome. You see, resilience isn't about avoiding the storms of life. It's about learning to dance in the rain, about finding a way to shine even when the skies are cloudy. It's about understanding that adversity is not an endpoint, but a part of the journey, a step on the path to achieving our dreams. Each of us has our own story of resilience, our own moments of adversity that we faced or are currently facing. The question is not whether these moments will come, but how we will respond when they do. Will we let them defeat us, or will we, like Sarah, use them as fuel to propel us forward, to push us towards becoming the best versions of ourselves? The key to overcoming adversity with resilience lies in our mindset. It's in believing that no obstacle is insurmountable, no dream out of reach. It's in knowing that each setback is a setup for a comeback, that every failure is a stepping stone to success. It's in understanding that resilience is not a trait we're born with, but a skill we can develop, a muscle we can strengthen with each challenge we face. So as we navigate the twists and turns of life, let's remember Sarah's story. Let's remember that within each of us lies an indomitable spirit, a wellspring of resilience waiting to be tapped. Let's face our adversities not with fear, but with courage, not with despair, but with determination. Let's embrace the power of resilience, and in doing so, transform our greatest challenges into our greatest victories. Now, let's delve into the importance of self-reflection. This is the mirror we hold up to our own souls, asking ourselves, who am I? Where am I going? What have I learned from the paths I've traveled? Self-reflection is not about dwelling on the past, but learning from it, understanding our successes and our failures, our strengths, and our areas for improvement. It's through this process that we gain deeper insights into our own character. Adaptation, the ability to adjust to new conditions, to change course when the path we're on leads to a dead end, is crucial. It's about listening to the feedback life gives us, whether in the form of challenges that test our resolve or opportunities that beckon us toward new horizons. Adaptation is recognizing that the strategies that brought us success in the past may not be the ones that will carry us forward into the future. It's about being flexible, open to change, and ready to pivot when necessary. To illustrate these points, let me share a story about a tree. Yes, a tree. Imagine a tree that's grown tall and strong, its branches reaching high into the sky. This tree could have chosen to grow in one direction, straight up, but instead it branched out, exploring new directions, adapting to the sunlight, the wind, and the rain. Over time, it grew not just in size, but in beauty and strength, becoming more resilient to the storms it faced. Like this tree, our growth is multidimensional, fueled by our willingness to learn, reflect, and adapt. All these insights, all these strategies, they hinge on one essential element, a commitment to excellence. It's about setting a standard for ourselves that exceeds the ordinary, pushing beyond our perceived limits and reaching for the extraordinary. This commitment isn't a one-time declaration. It's a daily practice, a constant striving to be better today than we were yesterday. 
Now, I urge you, don't let this be just another conversation that fades into the background of your busy life. Let it be the spark that ignites a flame within you, a flame of desire, determination, and dedication to your personal journey of growth and excellence. Take the first step today. It doesn't have to be monumental. Success, after all, is built on a foundation of small, consistent action. Whether it's setting a clear goal, choosing to adopt a positive outlook, dedicating time to learn something new, or simply deciding to stand back up in the face of failure, each small step is a victory in its own right. Remember, the path to excellence is not a sprint. It's a marathon. There will be challenges, there will be setbacks, but there will also be triumphs and moments of unparalleled joy. Embrace it all. Let each experience, each lesson enrich you, strengthen you, and propel you forward.